So back in 2021, GQ South Africa named him a triple threat in the entertainment industry. Not only is he an award-winning actor, but our next guest is also a producer and director and has represented South Africa in numerous international productions as well. In fact, his first big role was back in 2003 on SABC One's Cha Cha. Sisanda Henna joins us this morning uh, for more on his career, his life. Good morning. It's great to see you. Thank you. Wonderful. Great to have you here with us this morning. Thank you. Um, I'm reading an article, just as some background to your career, mm. but this article is from 2021, and it talks about... Benjamin likes to talk about people's ages when he talks about their accolades. <laughs> so it talks about you being a 39-year-old in 2021 with a whole host of accolades. Yes. As you reflect with us, us this morning um, on how far you've come, what comes to mind? Hmm. So turning 40 last year. You and me both. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, high five. Yes. <laughs> so um, you look back and you think, what have I done in the mm. last 20 and as much as there's things that I've achieved, I also thought, there's so much I haven't done. Mm. There's so much I didn't reach. And what do I do in the next 10, in the next 20 years, right? So, you know, you turn 40, you think, what am I doing between now? And then I, I thought, I really want to focus on the companies. Um, growing like three companies at the moment. Uh, one of which obviously makes film. The other one designs and executes uh, skills development and, uh, in the industry. Uh, and then another company completely out of the industry. Mm. And so where, yeah, it's, that, that's like, it's exciting and you're grateful for what you have, but like hungry for so much more. Yeah. So you're talking about um, your latest project, and this is through Sisanda Henna Films. Yes. So have. you're co-funding co a Klosa TV series. Right. So our main partner is the Eastern Capes Arts and Culture Council, which is the film agency of the Department of Arts in the Eastern Cape. Um, they, they have a show there that they've also supported called Kabecha, mm -hmm. which is, a, I think, a telenovela. Ours is a limited series. There's another drama series. But Eastern Cape is, you know, has beautiful locations. And the mandate was, let's celebrate the, the culture and the language in an epic drama series. Wow. And uh, we were just so honored to have one, you know, uh, through the pitching process to, to get one of those, yeah. So is it right that you're doing castings in the province next month? That's right. So we're looking for, we're looking for talent in, in the province. And I remember being in that position, right? So being 20 and having this dream of like, of, of doing this thing. And uh, so we, you know, our partners in, in the Eastern Cape, which is the uh, ICPAC, the Arts and Culture Council said, let's be in the province. We'll, we'll visit about three major towns mm. and we'll do, we'll do castings there. But that will be round two. So people will probably see adverts coming out in the next week or so. And then uh, in, towards the end of Feb, we'll be there doing the castings. So, so Cha Cha, 2003, it's 2023 now. So that's, that's two decades ago. Yeah, and uh, that was the first leading role and won what was then the Duku Duku Awards uh, before they had the softers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was a Kosa drama, actually, that was which I started, that was shot uh, partly in Pedi and partly in Joburg. But it was set in Joburg, all of it, but we just shot some of it there and some of it here, yeah. which was amazing. One of the, you know, most beautiful roles I've had. And there's been others. Um, yeah. Mm. I mean, when, when we think about you as this triple threat, right, it, it doesn't, it, it's not a foregone conclusion that your favorite part of the many hands you have in the pot is in front of the camera what would you say it is is it the directing is it the acting if you had to choose i would say now it's probably leading a studio and mm -hmm. leading a company that's because when you're showrunner you're not necessarily directing but you give direction to that you give direction to the writing so i think show running and acting are my number ones Mm. Because I will still be acting going forward in, yeah. in the projects we do. Yeah. And it shows that you enjoy it, right? Um, I last saw you in Inconceivable, which uh -huh. I think was on, on Mnet. Yes, multi yeah, yeah. Um And that was such a, it was such a drama-filled series. And yes. you were a big part of the drama in that series. <laughs> yes. It was so, I, I, I hear people on, online, where, you know, people were like, we binge this show, we want more. Yeah. People loved that storyline. And uh, I mean... Kudos to, to the guys that made it. Um, yeah, we really enjoyed making that. But that was in the middle of COVID, you know. It was. Wearing it was. Uh, masks and things. In a bubble. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, we've, we've gone through that. We're also excited about the youth filmmaker program. Right. 
So NFVF, which is uh, the Department of Arts nationally, their film agency, the National Film and Video Foundation, have the Youth Filmmaker Program, and we pitched a, like a model to say this is a way you grow people in their careers sustainably over five to nine years, right? Not just six months and then you let them go. And so anyway, we're launching that next month, mm. uh, the National uh, the Youth Filmmaker Program. We're looking for 10 most talented writer-directors. They get incubated within the program. They learn the basics of developing scripts. They learn the basics of directing. They get to intern in some of the local productions, like some of the telenovelas. And then finally, they get to direct their own film. Yeah. So it'll be 10 short films will sort of be the culmination of that project. Correct. And each director then has a film with which they take to festivals, huh. and th that's their name behind a film. And hopefully I can convince some of the senior actors who are well known to be in some of these films. I mean, that's a brilliant part of the stage of your career, that you get to pull up other people who want to get into the industry. Yeah. The, and the industry is booming. Uh, and it's also not easy to get in and then to sustain a, a career. Yeah. So it's so important, I think, as we, as we coach them and mentor them, just the importance to creating your your sustainable career. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so let's talk about a sustainable career. You're now in two decades of your career, and I, I suppose it even goes back further than 2003 and Cha Cha, right? right? When you were still at the stage of your career where you were auditioning, trying to get a leg up, trying to get into projects that you are now getting other young people mm. into. Mm. How do you sustain a career here at home and what you've done mm. to take it around the world as well? Wow. Uh, you know, when we were at the Joburg Film Fest recently, we had some on the panels, we, we were having some of these questions, and uh, one of the guests is Jimmy Jean-Louis. He's a Haitian-American actor, right, who moved from Haiti to Hollywood. Basically, in essence, for he, him answering this was also a lot of focus and, and hard work. And I, and I think it's, it's important to understand, like, what it is that you're really good at and the uniqueness of that. Um, because besides acting, there are people sustaining writing careers, mm. directing careers, mm. producing careers. I mean, people are making music scores for, you know, and for everything that we see that's beautiful, there's cinematographers who are really good at that, who are really good at shooting and, you know, depicting great pictures. And so I, I think how you relate to people is also important. Because if it's nice to work with Michelle, I'll come back and mm. I'll be like, hey, actually, she's good. You know, if we're going to work hard over the next three months and grueling hours, 14 hours, etc., you want to be around people that you like being around, mm. right? And the kind of work that you, that, that you deliver. But hard work is a big part of it, right? I, I saw, uh, actually, ironically, an actor on Instagram who was talking about, you know, using the analogy, if you want to catch the bus, you've got to run for the bus. Hard. Okay? You can't be like, I, I really want to catch that bus and then stroll towards the bus. You have got to be out of your breath, yeah. running for your life and asking your ancestors to help you yeah, get onto yeah. that bus, but you're sprinting. And uh, yeah, with, with less concern for how your body will ache after. Mm. That's, you know, and, and last year we made a show called, uh, at the end of the year, Devil's Peak, which is an adaptation of a Dion Mayer book uh, yes. of the same title, uh, made by a BBC, owned, BBC Studios owned company called Lookout Point shot completely in South Africa, because the whole story is set here, and uh, I'm really excited for that project. And when does that come on air? That should be around May. Uh, so we're right now we're in post-production. Um, man, and I'm really proud. I think of that because, you know, turning 40, but I insisted on doing all my action <laughs> stunts, right? And they say, oh, now you're being chased by police on the Seapoint Promenade. Yeah. I said, no, no, fine, don't put a double. What do you mean a double? I'm going to do that. <laughs> I run my heart out, right? <laughs> because there's cranes and other cameras and drones and, you know, it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. And, I'm, yeah, I mean, I watch the others like, you know, your Tom Cruises who continue to hang on the side of an airplane. I said, what? I'm gonna, Tom's doing it. I'm yeah. doing it. Yeah. Change my insurance contract. But the funny thing is, yeah, you, you, the hard work and the passion. And then you'll just see the physio, you know, after that. Yeah, yeah. No, out. absolutely. Don't tell Benjamin that you're 40 and thinking of not doing your own stunts. <laughs> So this has to be my final question as we, as we wrap up our conversation this morning. What is next, right? For people who deliver at a pace that you deliver, that's always going to be the next thing. You do your best project, everyone raves about it, and then they want to know what's next. I really think that um, I, I'm keen for Sunday Films 
to produce eclectic work, world-class work. And that's not a one-man job. Yes, it has the name, but that's, that's, that's teamwork. Yeah. And we want to make world-class for, for the best uh, streamers, studios around the world. But, like, we believe that uh, top qu quality African-centered, mm. Afrocentric cinema and, and motion pictures can be seen and celebrated around the world. But also, I, th I think we're focused on celebrating Africanness through the stuff. So yeah. we want to make really incredible work. Wonderful. Well, we wish you all the best here on Channel 405. And we look forward to hearing about your next project sometime soon. Thank you. Thanks for Sisanda Henna, he's been called a triple threat in the entertainment industry. He joined us here on the AM Report this morning. Wonderful talking to you.